Hello, hello everyone. I'm Morton's Castle, and today I've made a proof of concept video for Civilization VI Switch, or just a general concept for a Nintendo themed strategy game. It's not that much of an attribute of my channel at the moment, but I love strategy games. I grew up playing Age of Empires, Civilization, and Roller Coaster Tycoon, and the genre is one of my favorite for gaming. I like the Civilization series, but I don't really have a good computer, and because of the lay in bed nature of the Switch, I've got Civilization VI Switch and have countless hours in it. I damn hope that they add Rise and Fall and the Gathering Storm DLCs, as I'm a slut for the new mechanics and any new possible civilization is hype for me. The more civs, the better, right? Well, what if Nintendo put special civs into the Switch version, like how they put Ganondorf armor in Diablo, or put Star Fox into that Ubisoft space game? The obvious examples would be to throw in Hyrule or the Mushroom Kingdom in as civs, and I've done exactly that, as well as crossed the Nintendo universe that I'm familiar with to add 9 total civilizations, over 15 Nintendo-based city-states, and a handful of unique wonders and natural wonders, not to mention the countless units and improvements to correlate to these civs. If you don't play Civilization, you might not get a lot of the terms I'm using, but it should be easy to follow. Some of the civs may sound OP or weak as hell, and it's because I'm not a game, game designer. <laughs> I came up with the civ and leader abilities, and unique units based off of what I thought was cool, what fits the Nintendo universe and canon, and how I'd assume it would play out in a rough strategy game idea. Again, this is a proof of concept. Before I roll the leader intros and then get into the city-states and wonders later on, here's the list of civilizations. I'm not familiar with Fire Emblem outside of Smash, so that's why there's none on this list. Sarasaland could definitely be a kingdom with Daisy as its leader, but because it's more obscure, it's not on this list for now. But I can do some research if you Daisy fans are loud enough, and I know Daisy fans are. <laughs> a potential DLC list of Nintendo Civs is also here based on my current ideas for a follow-up video, and I may do a follow-up video to this one, as well as Civilization VI gameplay in the future. Let's go. Prince of Darkness and King of Thieves, Great Ganondorf, this world is yours to conquer. With military might and brute force, you can transform all that you lay eyes on into your domain. Mighty Iron Knuckles and legions of evil rise at your command, and the drums of war will not slow you or your armies. Your eternal hatred will be the demise of any civilization clinging to this mortal realm. So Ganondorf's bonuses, as you saw, set him up for domination victory very well. As in the Zelda series, he's obsessed with domination, I think this was fitting. No war weariness allows him to go on forever, and discount production on melee units will supply his armies. These bonuses make some military policy slots obsolete, so that means he can focus on getting better military policy slots or use his policies elsewhere to be more well-rounded. Barbarians can potentially join him as he's a symbol of power and evil, and he earns faith by killing as he's constantly reincarnated and has the Triforce of Power. Faith could be used to set up a religion that benefits a war playstyle and potentially buy units or walls later on. He has two unique units, Bacoblin and Iron Knuckle. Bacoblins replace the standard warrior and I think will have one extra movement, and as well as a little bit extra strength, no extra health. This will allow Ganondorf to quickly raid city-states and civs in the early game. Iron Knuckles will replace Swordsman, and therefore require iron to be made. This incentivizes Ganons to settle near iron, or to take those who have it, or to take over those who have it. Iron Knuckles will have way more health and more damage than a standard Swordsman, but will have a higher production cost to balance it out, even with Ganon's boost towards producing melee units. All in all, this should make him a formidable, scary threat in the early game who just wants to take your shit, but once more technologies become available, other, other civs should thrive. Fairest Princess Peach, lead the famous Mushroom Kingdom through looming hardships, and maintain the substantial peace that your people have known for generations. The honest and agricultural society of the Toads is a breathtaking one. Achieve great things through the arts, sovereign Toads tool, and unite not just your people, but the world.
I based Peach's bonuses entirely on Super Mario 64. You know she's got all those paintings, so in Civilization, it'd be funny if she focused on getting great works of art. Her many art slots in the castle support this playstyle, and a Peach player would benefit from building theater districts and wonders. The Mushroom Kingdom is pretty peaceful, and that's why she has no unique units and gets an extra diplomatic policy slot. Peach would benefit from working with city-states and becoming suzerain of as many as possible. The Mushroom House is a unique improvement built by a builder on flat grassland, and I think it could be available from the beginning or close to the beginning of the game. It gives one housing, which is 0.5 more than a standard farm, one food yield, and one culture yield, and with the Mushroom Kingdom Civ bonus, increases the appeal of surrounding tiles. In the end, this will increase housing and tourism for Peach. The warp pipe is a funny improvement idea and would be built by a builder after learning the sanitation science. Two warp pipes could be built in friendly territory and allow units to teleport between them for only one movement cost and could potentially have them move across the entire world. This would be a good defensive or offensive Im improvement in the late game for moving troops. Master Porky, time and space have unraveled to reveal your greatness. You are truly unstoppable. Enlighten the citizens of the world with your advanced technology and culture. Bring happiness to every city-state, and quell threats with your mighty pig mask armies. The world looks to you, your highness. Porky's an evil bastard, but if Mao Zedong could be leader of China and Civ Rev, then I guess this is fine. The Pork Empire is relatively weak in the earlier game, and it's not until the modern era where he shines. Once there, he gets massive boosts on advanced technology and has special units correlating to that technology that are quite powerful. His cities can grow without proper housing and will fill up quite fast when there is housing. This ensures he can expand fast and get as many yields as possible. Porky gets a unique district, the Happy Box Neighborhood, which is like a neighborhood and it gives 2 to 6 housing, but this specialty district gives anemones and loyalty. Placing one of these on a conquered city will subdue it and assimilate it into your empire with ease. The increased anemone and loyalty count throughout the empire will allow Porky to wage war without much consequence. The Pig Mask is a unique unit that replaces modern infantry and will do more damage to units of city-states. The Pork Tank replaces the normal tank, and has increased health and lower production. You might just want to watch out for bananas. Donkey Kong, leader of the bunch. Your island civilization is a thriving one. Underestimated as primate kind, but you and your loyal friends, and all of the animal kingdom reign over the seas. Dense jungle territories and sprawling savannas give you comfort and let your culture and strength grow beyond measure. Make allies, but tread carefully in the international climate, greatest of apes. Donkey Kong gets bonuses from rainforest tiles as the jungle is his natural habitat. These dense areas where other civilizations may struggle will let the Kongs grow with extra production. Reduced movement costs for jungles will allow the Kongs to defend their territory or attack other jungles with ease. Banana resources triggering a culture bomb will allow his territory to grow rapidly if bananas are nearby. The carefree nature of the Kongs grant them extra anemones which will guarantee them a happy civilization and units in neutral territory heal faster, making the Civ strong on the seas or nearby islands. The Kongs get two unique structures, Kong College and Swanky's Shadow. Kong's College replaces the campus district and will grant more science for every Kong College within the Empire, so the more you have, the more science you will get overall. Swanky's Sideshow is a unique building in their entertainment complex, replacing the arena and giving plus two anemones instead of one for a happy society.
Hyrule's armies look to you in this time of darkness. Inherit the throne, Princess Zelda, and take on the legacy of your father. Use your wisdom and your light to guide your people into a golden age. Do not hesitate to call upon the Triforce, or pray to Faror, Din, and Nehru. As the spirit of Hylia is within you and makes your kingdom divine, Zelda's bonuses set up her civilization to be a defensive, religious one. Walls grant faith, so there is a double incentive to protecting oneself. If war is declared upon her, faith output is increased and production gets a small boost, ensuring her ability to survive during wartime. A mixed religious strategy would do Hyrule well, and possibly a cultural one, a cultural one as building a wonder brings adjacent tiles into your territory. Hyrule soldiers replace spearmen, and have plus 10 defense if in a holy site, wonder, or city center. This will make Hyrule a sturdy and defensive civilization in the early eras. Hyrule's unique building is Lon Lon Ranch, and is a tile improvement that can be built by a builder. It needs animal husbandry, and replaces the pasture. It gives more food yields than a pasture, and grants plus one culture. If the pantheon god of the open sky is chosen, it will give extra culture. <laughs> From the cold iron of the Stone Age, to galaxy generators of the near future, you will build a vast empire, King Koopa. Your thirst for blood and battle will take your people down dangerous paths, but navigate the battlefield with your impressive armada of airships, and your tactical hammer brothers. In the end, your foes will kneel to the throne of Bowser's castle. So Bowser's Civ is pretty interesting. The Gathering Storm DLC has not come out yet for the PC, I don't think. Um, but the whole idea of weather effects and natural disasters gave me some ideas to give Bowser some advantages. As his castles are always surrounded by lava, volcanic eruptions will not pillage anything in his civilization, letting him reap the rewards of settling near volcanoes without taking any risk. He can gain production from mountains and deserts, and stay strong in otherwise wasteland areas. Bowser is castle obsessed, having a lot of them, and that's why his engineers can make more forts than normal, and his forts can give more defensive strength to his units. His two, new his two unique units are Hammer Brothers and Airships. Hammer Brothers will replace archers and be an effective range unit with more strength to their name. When adjacent to another Hammer Brother, their strength will be even stronger. In the mid-game, Bowser will get airships through square rigging. Airships replace the frigate and can fly over land tiles, and will be effective at bombarding units and cities with their extra powerful cannons. Until flight is researched in other civs, only ranged units and cities will be able to defend themselves from these powerhouses. Tyrant of the Seven Seas, and King of the Kremlings. Humanity and the animal kingdoms alike fear your grand galleons. K. Rule, this world is yours to plunder. The Kremlings have a taste for gold, and under your leadership, will settle an oceanic kingdom of piracy and debauchery. Come aboard, our beloved king. Our beloved king leads the Kremlings in the strategy game concept. As he's a pirate, it only makes sense that his naval units are stronger in enemy territory, allowing him to pillage and coastal raid with ease. This will be all the easier with his unique unit, Gangplank Galleon, a powerful naval vessel that replaces the privateer and would possibly have more strength and movement to its name. King Kirul's other civilization bonus makes him seek out bananas as they are not in his home territory 
and give his occupied constituents and weary soldiers some happiness. As the Kremlings are industrious and militaristic, whenever King K. Rule builds an industrial zone or encampment, that city will become more loyal. Hopefully this allows him to set up a colonial empire or network of island territories. This should be backed by his unique improvement, Kremlin Quay, which requires the shipbuilding science. It will be built by a builder on coastal tiles and gives 0.5 housing, plus one production, and another plus one production for each adjacent fish tile. I'm a big DK fan and love K. Rule's alternate aliases, and Civilization VI's big selling point is the fact that there can be different leaders for each Civ, so stay tuned till the end of the video for more Kremlings. But in the meantime, I'm going to roll out my videos for City States and Natural Wonders for revealing the final two civilizations. people of Dreamland need a ruler, and you've stepped up to the plate. Self-proclaimed, King DDD, your many fortresses will ensure the safety of your peaceful people. And your appetite for food and victory will take you across the stars and seas for territory to conquer. They may not want you to be king, but in the end, you'll be a monarch known to history. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I don't have any idea for unique units or improvements for King DDD. I base his bonuses around food as he's always stealing it from Dreamland. That's why he gets more yields from his own farms and gets gold and health from pillaging enemy farms. With his Monarch bonus, he gets extra food in the capital and should be able to build up a large population very quickly and get various science or civics from there. As he's like a bad self-proclaimed leader, supposedly, I wanted to restrict him by not allowing him to construct government plazas from the Rise and Fall DLC. They're important districts and he'll struggle loyalty-wise without them. Uh, so perhaps his unique units, maybe like a Waddle Dee or Bonkers or something, could promote loyalty or simply have stronger uh, damage output in friendly territory. Seriously, let me know what your ideas could be. Uh, for his unique improvement, maybe thinking a fort, because you know King DDD's always got a castle. Um, maybe it could be like a boxing arena. Because um, you know the mass DDD, maybe something to promote like propaganda something um, But I just couldn't think of anything before I wanted to get this video out. So if you got ideas share them Across the roaring seas ride the chill winds of the motherland Lord Frederick the snow mad king Bring the touch of the Arctic wherever you go freezing your many enemies and sustaining the numerous populations of your people. 
Nature is a deadly weapon, and you've mastered the art of using it for yourself. Claim the Isles, Lord of the Snowmats. As a big fan of Donkey Kong Country and Retro Studios' phenomenal job on Tropical Freeze, I had to add the Snowmads in. They're technically a civilization in the Nintendo universe, and who doesn't love Vikings? I base their bonuses around the weather effects of Gathering Storm, so when they capture a city, it creates a blizzard that devastates enemy units nearby. Settling a city transforms the area around it into a frozen wasteland, but their special improvement, Snow Fort, built by a builder, will give one housing, and two production so they can thrive in these frigid areas. They're incentivized to settle along the coast though, as fishing boats will give them extra food than normal, as well as two production so they can build up a naval network. They can do this with their early game Snowmad Galleys, galleys that are stronger and cheaper to build. Pillaging sea tiles gives these famous Vikings some culture. This is the last civilization. Um, after this I'm going to roll the video I have for Wonders and then that's it for this video. If you found any of these ideas worthwhile, leave a like on the vid to let me know that all this creativity wasn't in a vacuum. Uh, it means a lot. Um, and yeah, comment any ideas you got for other civs or city states or something like that. Um, and if you'd be interested in seeing an edited playthrough of Civ 6, let me know because I'd be happy to do that. Stay tuned for After the Wonders if you're interested in K. Rule's alternate identities. I am the captain now, you said, and delivered the Kremlings into a new age. Crocodile Isle grows in power as your ships pillage the nearby coasts, raise the structures of civilization, and return with a hull of gold and great people. Captain K. Rule, do not let the defeats of the past weigh you down. Your loyal Kremlin crew stands at your side, seeking revenge and glory just the same. The quest for knowledge is a maddening one. Go mad, Baron K. Rulenstein, for the power and industry at your disposal will be unmatched across the globe. Unravel the inner workings of machinery and robotics to advance the prosperity of your keep. Establish mechanos in foreign lands, and bring the advancements of Kremlin kind to the uncivilized. Scientific enlightenment is your gift to the world. <laughs> 